Hello and welcome to Kashmir Now. I'm your host Hina. Let's take a look at some stories of this week's episode. Kashmiri activists hold anti park protests, call out Islamabad's human rights violations. Retired government employees protest in Muzaffarabad, demand pay raise. Top arrangements done for the pilgrims of Amarnath Yatra to have a safe and peaceful pilgrimage. Udhampur based NGO educating slum children free of cost. And later in our section of Incredible India, we will take you to Goa to witness the Sonjong festivities. Pakistan has been for long exploiting the land and people of its illegally occupied territories. To protest against its atrocious attitude, activists from Gilgit Baltistan and POK recently held a demonstration on the sidelines of the ongoing 50th session of UNHRC in Geneva. Have a look. A number of Kashmiri activists led by the chairman of the United Kashmir People's National Party, Sardar Shaukat Ali Kashmiri, demonstrated against Pakistan on the sidelines of the ongoing 50th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. They raised anti-Pakistan slogans and demanded Islamabad to free Kashmir and other parts that it has illegally occupied for decades. Pakistan! With Jammu Kashmir! Pakistan! With Jammu Kashmir! They held banners reading stop land grabbing and occupying hilltops of POK and terrorist infrastructure must be dismantled. While addressing the demonstrators, Shaukat Ali Kashmiri said, Pakistan has given free hand to the army and it is increasingly involved in the human rights violations in the region. Soon after British India's partition in 1947, Pakistan army, which largely comprised tribal mercenaries, invaded and occupied a part of Jammu and Kashmir. POK and Gilgit Baltistan have remained under its occupation since then. The land, the resources and the people of the region have been overly exploited by Islamabad for these many years. While on one side Pakistan has marginalized these people socially and politically, it has exploited all their resources indiscriminately on the other side. Their land and rivers are used to serve the people of Pakistan and not those who have a prerogative over them. We are going to submit a memorandum to the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. We are we're here, we were protesting against the Pakistani atrocities. Pakistan is plundering over natural resources. He is occupying over land. We are the owner of the natural resources, rivers, dams, but they are produ producing electricity and exporting to Pakistan. And there is a shortage of electricity 15 to 20 hours per day. There is a unemployment, there is a terrorism, there is a extremism promoted and projected by Pakistan. And we are here to raise our voices against these atrocities. Kashmiri activists have time and again knocked on the door of the international community to intervene in the rapidly worsening human rights situation in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. They haven't, however, received much success as all what the global bodies have managed to come up with so far is mere condemnation. The activists, however, say they are not going to give up and their fight against Pakistani atrocities will continue 
until their demands are fulfilled and rights are restored. Pakistan! Stop terrorism! Pakistan! Stop terrorism! Moving on, the elderly people in illegally occupied POK recently came out on streets to protest against the government for not increasing their pension. Amid rising inflation, it has become very difficult for the retired employees to meet their basic needs. They say government has promised them to raise their pension, but till date, no notification has been issued. We have a report. Braving bad weather conditions, retired government employees of illegally occupied POK recently held a demonstration in Muzaffarabad city to demand hike in their pension. They called out the government for its apathetic attitude that has pushed them to the brink. They said amid rising inflation, it has become difficult for them to meet their livelihood needs with the minuscule amount that they receive. Moreover, as they are senior citizens, their medical costs are also expensive. Even after serving in the government departments for years, these retired employees have been left to suffer by the POK administration. It has just turned a blind eye to their demands. With government taking no cognizance of their issues, the demonstrators have threatened to increase the intensity of their protest. <laughs> Disappointment and anger is writ large on the faces of these retired employees. With local administration working hand in glove with Islamabad, there is widespread resentment across all sections of the society in POK. One of the most revered Hindu pilgrimages, Amarnath Yatra, is underway in Jammu and Kashmir. The 43-day-long holy expedition that commences at the end of June is attended by lakhs of pilgrims every year. This time, it is being held after a gap of two years due to the COVID pandemic. For the peaceful and smooth conduct of the Yatra, elaborate security and other arrangements have been put in place. Have a look. Taking place after a suspension of two years, this year's Amarnath Yatra is expected to be visited by six to eight lakh pilgrims, almost twice the size than ever before. Located at an altitude of 3,888 meters, the Holy Amanath Cave is believed to be the abode of Lord Shiva and his consort Parvati, making it one of the holiest sites among the Hindus. Mm -hmm. 
Devotees take two possible routes to reach the cave. The shorter but steeper trek is 14 km long route via Baltal, Domial, Bararai and Sangam. The longer but most preferable route is around 47 km long via Pahalgam, Chandwani, Pissutop, Sheshnag and Panchtarni. This year for the safety and security of pilgrims, over 80,000 security personnel have been deployed by the JNK administration to secure the twin routes leading to the shrine. अमरनाथ यात्रा को पीसफुल कंडक्ट करने के लिए जितनी भी एप्रोप्रिएट सिक्योरिटी मेजर्स हैं और जो डोमिनेशन है चाहे हाईवे का हो चाहे बॉर्डर का हो उसमें सफिशिएंट डोमिनेशन किया गया है और हम ये सोचते हैं कि जितनी भी अमरनाथ यात्रा के लोग या यात्री यहां पे आएंगे तो उनको किसी किस्म की कोई असुविधा नहीं होगी बॉर्डर एरिया में डोमिनेशन की गई है डे एंड नाइट ट्वेंटी फोर उसमें Jammu and Kashmir Police, Army, BSF, Tino, Ek Sinarji, and are working in coordination. People have been tagged with radio frequency identification or RFID chips to keep track of them and drones for aerial surveillance have also been placed. Pilgrims praised the administration for taking all the safety measures. Proper tracking is going on. We are going to issue cards. We are going to proper. They can take us our record. They can record where we were reaching and all. So, it will be good. So, it will be better. It will be a good experience. It will be the first time we are going to know. It will be safety wise, security wise. It will be safety wise, security wise. It is very good. To handle medical emergencies, the health department has deployed around 1,500 healthcare workers from the Union Territory as well as from other states of the country. Around 70 medical centers, including 6 base hospitals, 12 emergency aid centers, 26 oxygen booths and 15 on-road facilities have also been set up. From Walnut Factory to Dardakut, 18 camps are other than oxygen booths. So, we have established it before. We have improved our infrastructure, we have improved it this year. We have improved our beds strength as compared to last year. It was just 20, uh, 270 beds we were providing for the Yatra facility. This time, keeping in view that Yatra ka rush will be much more. In that we have taken this approach as per directions from our higher authorities, ACS Health and Director of Health Services Kashmir. So, we have increased the strength of the bedroom. The Along with it, mobile toilets, designated water supply, CCTV cameras, public signboards have also been facilitated all along the NH44. Community kitchen that could feed lakhs of pilgrims on the way to cave shrine of Amarnath have also been set up. Similarly, arrangements for accommodation and shelter beds are available for the pilgrims in all districts en route. हमारे 36 लॉजमेंट सेंटर्स हैं और जगह-जगह पर आपने देखा होगा हाईवे पे हर लगभग 28 लंगरों ने इस वक्त हमसे परमिशन ली है और सैनिटरी कॉम्प्लेक्सेस बनवाए गए हैं बिजली पानी की भी पूरी व्यवस्था की गई है। Covered by snow almost all year round, Amarnath Cave contains an ice stalagmite that is considered a physical manifestation of Lord Shiva, a Hindu god. According to legend, Lord Shiva decided to tell Parvati the secret to his immortality in this cave, which was later discovered by a shepherd named Bhuta Malik in 1850. Today, this holy cave is visited by lakhs of pilgrims in the form of Amarnath Yatra, 
which is a great reflection of our country's composite culture as people of all faiths lay their contribution to make it successful. They say education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Moving on the same trail, an NGO in Udhampur is conducting classes for the children living in the slum area of the district. This initiative will not just empower them, but also help them move on the way to self-reliance. An opportunity can play a big role in shaping someone's future. And when this opportunity comes in the form of education, it can really do wonders. The slum children living near the Birma Bridge in Udhampur are availing this opportunity at present. A district-based NGO namely Live for Other Being Helpful Foundation is providing education and recognition to many such voices. Under their project Mission Make, they have brought a ray of hope for those children who can't afford school education and were sitting idle at their homes. The director of the foundation, Vivek Parihar, said their objective is to provide basic education and enroll these slum kids in government schools in the mainstream education system. different domains pe kaam karte hain for example relief hai environment hai health hai education hai youth development hai to hamari panch domains mein se ek domains tha hamara free education usi se related humne ye initiative socha tha ki hum ye start kare aur hum ye initiative hamara fab ke man se chal raha hai udhampur ke birmapur area mein jahan pe hamari koshish ye hai ki jitne bhi yahan pe गरीब घरों के लोग हैं जो जिनके पेरेंट्स लेबरर का काम करते हैं या कुछ भी जो एफर्ड नहीं कर सकते हैं एजुकेशन को हमारी कोशिश है कि हम उनको एक ट्रैक पे लाएं एक जो बेसिक एजुकेशन है जो उनका राइट right है तो हम उनको वो प्रोवाइड करा पाएं ताकि वो भी एक जागरूक नागरिक बन सके हिंदुस्तान के क्योंकि यहाँ पे जब हम पहले आए थे तो हमने देखा था कि बहुत सारे बच्चे ऐसे थे जो डिफरेंट एक्टिविटीज़ में लगे रहते थे फॉर एग्जांपल रैप पैकिंग हो गया या कुछ भी हो गया तो उन एजुकेशन की लाइन पे नहीं थे तो बहुत सारे बच्चे ऐसे थे जिनकी उम्र 12 साल 13 साल हो गई है लेकिन वो आज तक एजुकेशन में नहीं आए एजुकेशन की लाइन पे नहीं आए तो हम हमने कोशिश यही की और हमारी टीम ने पूरे एफर्ट्स लगा के इन सबको मोटिवेट किया काउंसलिंग्स दी इनके पेरेंट्स को ताकि इनको ये यहाँ पर भेज सकें तो और हम इनको बेसिक एजुकेशन दे सकें The initiative was started with four children in the month of February and today the number has increased to 20. Besides education, these young kids are also provided with notebooks, pencils and erasers and even eatables by the NGO. Children receiving the education are mostly of laborers and those who do menial jobs. They are happy to get a chance to achieve their dreams and make a bright future. विवेक सर आके बोले हमें कि हम आपको पढ़ाने आएंगे तो तब से हम पढ़ रहे हैं विवेक सर हमें पढ़ा रहे हैं तो हमें बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है लेबर थे मेरे पापा मम्मी और पापा मिस्त्री थे हमारी जो टीम है इसका एक मिशन था मिशन मेक ठीक है तो हम जो है चार मेंबर्स हैं इस एन में यहाँ पे जो स्पेशली इस स्लम एरियाज में आते हैं हमारा मेन मोटो ये है कि यहाँ के जो बच्चे हैं वो अपना लाइवलीहुड एटलीस्ट जो है खुद जो है वो अर्न कर सके हम जो है जब पहले यहाँ पे आते थे ना हमें बहुत मुश्किल होती थी तब यहाँ पे कोई भी इतना सपोर्ट नहीं करता था हमें तो अब ये जो है जब हम ये खुद बच्चे अब जो है हमें बुलाते हैं यहाँ पे कि आओ जब हम लेट भी हो जाते हैं कभी थोड़ा ज़्यादा गैप हो जाता है तो खुद हमें कॉल जाती है इनकी कि मैम आप आए नहीं सर आप आए नहीं हमने फसल बीमा योजना को अधिक प्रभावी बनाया उसके दायरे में ज्यादा किसानों को लाए 
नहीं है डर नहीं फिकर मिली हमें नई डगर फसल का करवा के बीमा किसान की चिंता को छीना आज ही प्रधानमंत्री फसल बीमा योजना से जुड़े और निश्चिंत हो जाएं कृषि एवं किसान कल्याण मंत्रालय भारत सरकार आओ हमें पढ़ाओ अब इनको ना अब पॉजिटिव चेंज बहुत सारा है अब इनको ये चीज पता है कि हमें पढ़ना है हमें स्कूल में एनरोल होना है अलोंग विद लिव फॉर अदर बीइंग हेल्पफुल फाउंडेशन दे आर मेनी एनजीओ इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर दैट आर वर्किंग टुवर्ड्स एम्पावरिंग स्लम किड्स थ्रू एजुकेशन दे आर वर्किंग विद मिशनरी जील to help transform lives of children and shape their future in right way next we move on to our section of incredible india where today we will take you to the land of beaches goa that recently got engulfed in the festivities of the much awaited son jao festival One of the most important occasions of Catholic community in Goa, the festival marks the birthday of Saint John the Baptist and is observed with much vigor. As the monsoon arrives, the entire state of Goa gets soaked in the festivities of San Jao Carnival, one of the famous fiestas of the state. Held every year in the month of June, this Catholic festival is a part of Portuguese heritage and is celebrated in dedication to Saint John the Baptist, who, according to Christian scriptures, is said to have baptized Lord Jesus. During the festival, local folks and tourists jump into wells or man-made ponds to commemorate the leap of joy which Saint John is said to have taken in the womb of his mother Elizabeth when Virgin Mary visited her. People also wear kopel, a beautiful headgear made of flowers, fruits and leaves and scream Viva San John to mark the occasion. Though observed across the state, villages of Kotalim in South Goa and Harmal, Baga, Sholim and Terekol in North Goa celebrate it with immense enthusiasm. Today is our traditional Sanjao feast and we are celebrating in Sholim since uh, 27 years in Sholim. This is our traditional uh, feast of uh, Saint John the Baptist, and all people from all over the country and over the world come to to celebrate our feast over here. Oh, it's really beautiful seeing so much color and seeing so much culture of Goa being on display and people being out in the rain and enjoying themselves and. Yeah, it's been a lovely day. Boat parade in Sholim is the highlight of the festival that usually sees both visitors and tourists running into thousands. Held in front of St Anthony's Church, it was first started in 1992 and marks the beginning of revelry in the San Jao festival. With the theme love, fear and death, this year's boat parade saw a number of colorful floats like the one featuring football spot with FIFA trophy, another representing boat ambulance and many more with different ideas. Today is the feast of Saint John the Baptist, celebrated all over the world. So Saint John the Baptist is the legendary figure in the biblical figure who lived in the times of Jesus. So we celebrate his feast today. And it's the, in Seolin, that is here, we uh, organize it in a special way. We have a traditional boat parade, which is happening here for the last almost hundred years or above. 
but for the last 28 years we organized it in a more uh, uh, organized way in a sense we have the boards we uh, acknowledge the presence we give them prizes and you know we have this set up here so we have around uh, 10 to 12 boards that come here every day they are colorfully decorated with attire sanjao attire and we have this boat parade here when a lot of people participate and this is a total people's feast As part of the festival locals also entertain visitors with folk dance performances and musical renditions Food and drinks are other enticements of the Sanjao festival particularly feni a spirit produced specially in Goa that overflows during the celebration Along with locals, tourists can also be seen enjoying this festival while dancing in rainwater, cherishing a fun-filled and colorful experience. We are celebrating Sanjao every year. This is the traditional Sanjao that is celebrated in Sholim. It is a boat festival, and this cross, which is here, which is built by our ancestors of Badem, and we are coming here to pay respect for it by putting this traditional kopel, which I am wearing right now, to the cross and to venerate him. And it is a celebration that is celebrated. It is a feast that is uh, celebrated with great pomp and joy all over Goa, because it is the feast of Saint John the Baptist that we are. celebrating today it's the first time that i've seen a, a cultural festival like that and we've always wanted to explore goa so i think we came at the accurate most time uh, of the year because this is an annual fest and everybody is wearing those tiaras originally made by them at their home and it's just a really nice vibe and it's it's a nice festival everybody uh, sings goan songs and they dance their cultural uh, on their cultural music and their uh, cultural form of dance so it's just really a new experience and a good one a kaleidoscopic blend of indian and portuguese culture Goa celebrates numerous exciting festivals that draw the attention of people from across the world. Celebrated with great enthusiasm and fervor, these festivals in Goa manifest the perfect mix of culture and heritage, giving a refreshing experience to town dwellers as well as tourists. <laughs> That's all we have for you in this week's episode. Till we see you next week, it's goodbye from the entire production team. हमने फसल बीमा योजना को अधिक प्रभावी बनाया उसके दायरे में ज्यादा किसानों को लाए नहीं है डर नहीं फिकर मिली हमें नई डगर फसल का करवा के बीमा किसान की चिंता को छीना आज ही प्रधानमंत्री फसल बीमा योजना से जुड़ें और निश्चिंत हो जाएं कृषि एवं किसान कल्याण मंत्रालय भारत सरकार